some practice with a percent purity acid base question. Here's the question. You try it yourself before you proceed. We're told that we put some impure calcium carbonate into some vinegar. Now we're given a lot of information, but let's fast forward right to the end and see what we're being asked. We're asked to find out the percent purity of that impure calcium carbonate tablet. Now, what does that mean? Percent purity is the fraction of this tablet that is actually calcium carbonate expressed as a percent. So we need the mass that is actually calcium carbonate, pure calcium carbonate. You see, that tablet there is not all calcium carbonate. It's a mixture. Only some of it is calcium carbonate. Of course, it's not all together like that as if you can break off the pure calcium carbonate. It's mixed in. But only some of it is calcium carbonate. And we need to know how much is actually calcium carbonate. And then we need to divide that by the mass of the whole tablet. Now, we told the mass of the whole tablet. It's 1,2 grams. And then we multiply this by 100% so that we get the percent purity. So since we already know the mass of the impure sample, the whole thing, the only thing that we still need to find out is the mass of calcium carbonate that's pure inside there. So how do we find that out? Well, that's the whole reason why we put it into the vinegar. Because vinegar contains an acid. The acid inside vinegar is called ethanoic acid. And when a carbonate reacts with an acid, we get a particular reaction. Click there if you don't know what that reaction is. You get a lot of fizzing and carbon dioxide forms also water and a salt. But the point is that only the pure calcium carbonate can react with the acid. The impurities don't react. So if we can find out how much ethanoic acid reacts, then we can work out by stoichiometric equivalence how much calcium carbonate Pure calcium carbonate must have reacted with it, and therefore, how much must have been there? So these two are going to react. We get bubbles, fizz, that's carbon dioxide coming up. And if we can just find out how many moles of ethanoic acid reacted, then we can work out what mass of calcium carbonate must have reacted with that. But how do we do that? Well, the first step is we need to know how much ethanoic acid we had in the beginning. How are we going to work out how many moles of ethanoic acid we had before this fizzing reaction? Well, we're told how much vinegar we have. And we're told that ethanoic acid makes up a certain fraction of that vinegar. You see, vinegar is also a mixture. It's also not pure. So not all of the vinegar is ethanoic acid, but it's a certain fixed fraction. So we can use that to calculate how many moles of ethanoic acid we had before the reaction. Unfortunately, that doesn't tell us how much actually reacted? Why not? Because not all the ethanoic acid reacts. How do we know that? The question tells us that the ethanoic acid is in excess. That means all the calcium carbonate that we have is going to react. That's good. But at the end, Although we won't have any calcium carbonate left inside there at the end, we will still have ethanoic acid because at the beginning there's more than enough ethanoic acid. So some is left behind after the reaction.
So the second thing we're going to have to find out is how many moles of ethanoic acid are left after the reaction, the fizzing reaction. So how do we find that out? We have to perform a titration. If you don't know what I mean, click there. So we need to take this container after the fizzing has finished and we need to add some pH indicator. Then we use a burette and we put a base, sodium hydroxide, inside there. And we add sodium hydroxide, but only just enough so that the indicator turns color. When it turns color, we know that equivalent amounts of ethanoic acid and sodium hydroxide have reacted. Now we know how much sodium hydroxide is needed for that. We told that. And so from that, we can work out, well, therefore, how much ethanoic acid must have reacted with that sodium hydroxide, which then tells us how much ethanoic acid was there in the container and reacted at the end of all that fizzing. Right. If we know how much ethanoic acid was there before the fizzing reaction and how much after the fizzing reaction, we get the difference between them then we know how much ethanoic acid actually had to react with the calcium carbonate. So the difference between that amount and that amount tells us how much ethanoic acid reacted. We then make use of the reaction ratio between ethanoic acid and calcium carbonate to work out, well, therefore, how much calcium carbonate must have reacted. In other words, how much calcium carbonate, pure calcium carbonate, must have been present. And when we've done that, then we can simply substitute that into the percent purity equation. And then we've got our final answer. So now what we need to do is to do each of these five calculations. Number one, we're trying to find out how many moles of ethanoic acid there were before the reaction. Now we know that we have 25 centimeters cubed of vinegar. And we're also given the density of vinegar. One gram of vinegar has a volume of one centimeter cubed. So from that, we have the mass of vinegar. Now we're told the percent of that, which is ethanoic acid. Now, I think there's a mistake in either the question or the memo of this question, because we're told that 4,52 percent, that means divided by 100, of the vinegar by volume is ethanoic acid. And yet we are clearly expected to use this by mass. And so I'm going to assume that, you know, we change the question a bit and we change it to by mass rather than by volume. Then this would be right. If you think I'm wrong, please leave me a comment below. Right, so Assuming that it actually should say by mass. Here we found out the mass of vinegar that we have. And now we're using this conversion factor, which tells us the proportion of the vinegar that is ethanoic acid to get now our information into ethanoic acid. So now we have the mass of ethanoic acid that we have. But we want the number of moles of ethanoic acid, not the mass of the number of grams of ethanoic acid. So we make use of ethanoic acid's molar mass to do that conversion. And you can go to the periodic table and you will find that ethanoic acid's molar mass is 60 grams per mole. Now, how did I know that I should put the 60 grams down at the bottom? It's very simple. Just look how I'm guided by my units. Centimeter cubes is canceling. And here we have grams cancelling. I'm left with moles. Just a quick note, don't make a mistake I see is quite common. 
and multiply this 60 gram per mole by two. The reason why people do that is because there's a two in front of ethanoic acid in the balanced equation between calcium carbonate and ethanoic acid. That two tells you that twice as many moles of ethanoic acid react as calcium carbonate. It's a reacting ratio, a molar reacting ratio. It can't affect what mass one mole of the substance has. Right, let's do this on our calculator. 25 multiplied by 4.52 divide by 100 equals divide by 60 equals 0, 0,0188 so on. So don't clear that. Let's put that into our calculator. Let's store it. By the way, this is moles of ethanoic acid. And let's store that into variable A on our calculator. Shift recall to get store A. So now we want to know how many moles of ethanoic acid were present after that fizzing reaction. How do we find it out? We make use of the information from the titration. We're told that 14,5 centimeter cubed of sodium hydroxide is needed to titrate against that. Let's convert that to decimeters cubed. We know that one decimeter cubed is a thousand centimeters cubed. We could have just done that in our head, 0, 0,0145. But anyway, let's show our step. You see that centimeter cubes cancel. We're left with decimeter cubed. Now we know the volume in decimeter cubed of sodium hydroxide that was needed to neutralize the ethanoic acid. But that doesn't help us if we don't know the concentration of that sodium hydroxide. We know from this formula, concentration is number of moles divided by volume, that to find out the number of moles of sodium hydroxide, we need to multiply the concentration by the volume, the volume here by the concentration. And we're told the concentration, it's one mole per decimeter cubed. So notice decimeter cubes cancels, we've now got moles of sodium hydroxide. But now we don't want to know how many moles of sodium hydroxide, we want to know how many moles of ethanoic acid. So we need to then multiply that by the reaction ratio between sodium hydroxide and ethanoic acid. We look at the balanced equation and very easy, we see that they react in a one mole to one mole reacting ratio. So one mole of sodium hydroxide reacts with every one mole of ethanoic acid. So notice, mole sodium hydroxide, this was sodium hydroxide, cancels out and we're left with the number of moles of ethanoic acid that reacted. We have 0, 0,0145 moles of ethanoic acid. What does that mean? That means that's how much ethanoic acid we had after this fizzing reaction. So now we know how much was there before, how much afterwards, we get the difference between them, then we know how much actually reacted. So this value, 0, 0,0188 0, moles minus this value, 0, 0,0145 moles. All of that is moles. Recall A minus 0 0.0145 equals 0, 0,0043 moles. And just for safety, let's go and put that into variable B. Shift store B. Okay, so now why did we want to know the number of moles of ethanoic acid that reacted in this fizz? Because from that we can figure out, using stoichiometry, what mass of calcium carbonate is there. So I'm going to do that in a single step. 
course, you can do it in two steps if you would prefer that. I'm asking what mass of calcium carbonate must have reacted with 0, 0,0043 moles of ethanoic acid. How do we figure that out? Well, the first step is we go to the balanced equation and we see the reaction ratio between ethanoic acid and calcium carbonate. And we see that it's one is to two. Now we need moles of ethanoic acid down here at the bottom to cancel away our given unit. Well, we need mass of calcium carbonate up at the top, but let's do it in two steps. So let's say we need moles of calcium carbonate up here at the top. And from the balance equation, we see that that reaction is one mole calcium carbonate for every two moles ethanoic acid. If you wanted to do this in two steps, well, you simply take this value divided by two, and then you know how many moles of calcium carbonate there are in there. But we need to convert that then into mass. If you like, you can make use of this formula. You know that mass is equal to number of moles multiplied by the molar mass. And in fact, that is what I'm doing here. I'm going to multiply this by the molar mass of calcium carbonate. Go to the periodic table. We check that out. We see it's 100 grams per mole. So I'm multiplying this by 100 grams for every one mole of calcium carbonate. And notice how moles cancel and we're left with grams. All the units cancel except for grams. This is calcium carbonate, so grams of calcium carbonate. Let's do this calculation on our calculator. I still have 0, 0,0043 on my calculator, so I simply go divide by 2, multiply by 100, and I get my answer 0, 0,216. Again, I'm not going to clear my calculator. Remember, that's not the end. We still have step five. We need to substitute this into the percent purity equation. And I'm not going to rewrite that. Let's just put that in here. 0, 0,217, although we use this value here. Divide by 1.2, multiply by 100, and we get our answer. 18,055, let's round off 18,06%. So quickly before we go, let's just recap. What have we actually done here? Remember, we're trying to find out the percent purity. In other words, this sample has some pure and some impure. And we want to know what fraction expressed as a percent is pure. Calcium carbonate. How do we do that? Well, we need to know the mass of calcium carbonate that's actually pure there. We're already given the mass of the whole. So how do we find out the mass that is pure? We react it with some acid because only the pure part will react. And if we can figure out how much acid is needed, then we can figure out how much calcium carbonate must have been present. How do we figure out how much acid was needed to react. We need to know how much acid was there at the beginning, how much was there at the end, and then get the difference between them, and that's how much reacted. Once we know how much was reacted, we use the ratio given by the balanced equation, apply proportion to it, to find out, well, therefore, how much calcium carbonate must have been present. And before we go, have you already liked? Have you subscribed? Have you left me a comment? And please go and visit my website. You'll find a lot of resources there and they categorize in a way that will make it very easy for you to find what you need. Until we meet again, learn science.